My name is Emery M. Moore Jr. and this is Exercise and Movement Techniques. And today I have the pleasure of interviewing Grandmaster Alan Lee of Kung Fu Wushu. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, I feel like we're making history tonight and I really appreciate it. So Mr. Lee, you have been in martial arts in this country and in China for a very, very long time. And I just want to go through a little bit of your background. When did you start martial arts training? I started when I was eight, eight years old. At eight years old. <clears throat> and then I really don't know what is the martial art. So my father said, you have to learn it. You don't learn it, you kick you off of the house. <laughs> See, I have no choice. <laughs> So your father was your first teacher? Yeah, my father is the first teacher. And then because I'm very weak in my uh, mind, <coughs> in my family, I talk about the brother, sister, and the weakest one. Okay. So in this way, my father doesn't like me. So he even wonder somebody adopt me. And wow. then uh, <coughs> my mother, Fall with him, say you're the Kung Fu master, why don't you train your son? You say your son weak, you train him, teach him. Mm -hmm. This is the beginning. So the, I'm the only one who learned from my father. You're the only one? Yeah, I'm only one. In the family? In the family, because I'm the weakest one. Interesting. <laughs> and what style was that? He's a southern style. Southern style. And then he even doesn't know uh, what the really man, and he just uh, call him Southern Shaolin. Southern Shaolin is yes. what he called it. And then you went from him, I know you studied with other teachers besides him. How many teachers have you had actually? I go through so many teachers because uh, <clears throat> he emphasized his business. He doesn't have a good system to teach me. Okay. He just said, hey, you stay the horse. And then I stay the horse. He forgot. I cannot stay the horse one hour. When you come back, he said, where you are? And uh, later he just, he fill up, he said, I don't have a time for you. I have a high the teacher teaching. So he left you in horse dance for an hour? Yes, he forgot. <laughs> <laughs> so in this way, he doesn't have a good system to teach him. He just said, you're going to stay in the horse. Make you stand uh, full, very strong, and nobody can push you. I don't understand. I don't like it. So, I make a long story short, and he hired, he hired the teacher, he hired, and also I learned from elementary school some teacher in the school. Okay. Okay. So, this is beginning to stop. So what brought you to America? You grew up in China? I grew in China and then uh, when the communists take over and then I relocate to Hong Kong. Okay. And when I relocate to Hong Kong and uh, because the, I cannot speak Cantonese well, I start to learn the Cantonese and also English is so poor and so this way I cannot have a chance to go to the Hong Kong University. Oh. Hong Kong University, everything's the English basis. Okay? I see. So in this way, I get stuck in Hong Kong. Luckily, Japanese uh, government, they opened the door. And because the Chinese, the Japanese war after the Second World War, I think they feel have an obligation they give the chance to the Chinese student and learn in the Japanese university. So after World War II, you went to Japan, and then how did you get to the U.S.? So I stayed in Japan four years, and then when I get a degree, and then the Japanese government say, you cannot stay. You are not the Japanese, because Japan in that time a lot of people doesn't have to work, okay? So 
They just say you gradually you go back to Hong Kong. So a lot of people didn't have any work. No. And they got rid of you basically because you were right. a kind of competition. So in this way, I applied to two places. One is Europe, German. You applied to Germany? Germany uh, University because I wanted to become a doctor or dentist. And uh, because of, I get an engineer degree from Japan, but I really want to know what became the doctor. So I applied to Germany and Japanese and also Germanese, they don't have too much uh, chance. They don't answer me quickly enough. Okay. The United States, American uh, University give me <clears throat> the chance. They just say, you can come. And then I get the Oklahoma University, University, they give me the permission. Wonderful. So when was the first school that you opened in the U.S.? I opened the school, I really teach some self-defense, Chinese wrestling, and Kung Fu in the college. Ah. In, for, just like I say, the small group I teach. It. Okay. So, when... How long ago was that? 19... 1958, 50, 59, <laughs> 60. And that was a little while ago. <laughs> yeah, then a little while ago, because in that time, nobody know what the Chinese Kung Fu. And they only know the Judo. And then a similar, right. similar like a, a, a Chinese, I say, it's similar like a, we call Chinese wrestling. Okay. So I teach self-defense and the Chinese wrestling. I see. So you were teaching in the university in Oklahoma, and you were teaching Chinese Kung Fu and wrestling, Chinese wrestling. And at that time, the only martial arts was judo. I don't. I think was karate even here then. I don't no, even, karate not even wasn't karate. here. Yet. Only judo. All right, karate came later. So how did you get to New York City? Because I gradually, and I cannot find a job in the. <clears throat> in the Tennessee, because of the, my first college is Oklahoma State University. The second one is uh, I get the permission to the Tennessee University. Right. So I graduated from the Tennessee University. I graduated, I can find a job over there. And then uh, I have found a job either West Coast and then the East Coast. So the West Coast. They don't have too much chance, and I get a job in the New York. When did you find the temple? I found it in the temple when I work in the New Jersey. And I talking about when I have work over there, Western Electric. Okay, I work over there, and the evening I really don't have too much a thing to do means I feel bored and I have to do the exercise. So I have something in my mind. I just say United States opened the door for me. Right. And let me become the engineer. Now I can live well. I have to think in what I can give something return to the United States society. Chinese Kui Kui. Kui Kui means I take something from the people, I have to give something to yeah. the people. That's the reason I opened the school. It's 1967. But before I opened the school, I fighting myself. I fighting myself. You were fighting. I means my mind. Oh, you have having conflict my, with your mind. My mind is a conflict myself. First, am I good enough? And then my answer is no, I'm not good enough. And why you're not good enough? You want to open the school. Means I owe the Americans something. Okay? 
I have to give something to return. So your the question is the question is you're not good enough, why you wanna teach? You have to teach. What's the best way? The best way I make my mind non profit organization. Not for profit. No profit. So in this uh, I don't take the people so many. I do the best. <laughs> so if I do not the best, even do the sloppy job, the people cannot blame <laughs> can me because I don't take your money. <laughs> this is the reason I open the non profit organization. So you didn't think you were you were you were good enough to teach? In the beginning many people say, Oh Alan, you in trouble, you're lucky, you can your school maybe lasts about three months. Luckily maybe six months. And I say, I try the best. And now it's two thousand thirteen. Now almost how many years? Almost fifty years. Okay. It's a long time. And then I even surprised to me other day I checked the student registered about thirty five thousand. You had thirty five thousand registration. Registration? Wow. And uh, also I checked the temple document and then letter and all the paper I check in and also check the certificate. We have three hundred and ninety eight degree holder means what they qualify as the teacher mm -hmm. when they have degree. And uh, I talked to many students, but yesterday, Sunday, uh, the day before, yesterday is the Sunday, we have the degree holder meeting. I talked to them, I said, look, you are good enough because you have a degree. Some have two degrees. Some have a three, some have a four, we have a six, get master degree. I see. And then I just say, you are good enough, you can open the school. Yeah. I would like to talk about, you were probably one of the first people in the United States to teach non-Asians martial arts. Yes. And you, as the story goes, I would really like to hear the story uh, for the people who don't know about what happened when you decided to teach non-Asians because uh, you got into a little bit of a trouble, I understand. Not a little bit of trouble, big trouble. <laughs> because Chinese, <clears throat> they're very, very conservative. They think they love a good thing they want to keep for themselves. Right. I don't blame them. It's like a professional jealousy. I see. First, we don't say Kung Fu, Wusu. We talk about the restaurant. In that time, even now, very rare Chinese chief cook is non-Chinese. Most is American. That's right. Okay. I know most of this are Chinese. Right. In the Not Chinese restaurant, much, yes. most of the chief cooks are Chinese, right? So in this way... <clears throat> They're protecting their secrets. They say they take the secret, they have a competition. But to me, my policy is, my reason is, American, if not open the door for me, if American say, non-Chinese, sure. go to the engineer sure. college, I never became an engineer. So American will open the door and then open the chance to me. So what engineer. happened? What happened? When well, you... in the beginning, Chinatown, a lot of Kung Fu instructor, they don't like me. Some even challenge me. I don't want to say anything, but I have to tell you because some people want to kill me. Or some people want to burn the school down. Or some people even send me the black invitation. Black invitation means a fight to death. Really? So a lot of my old students, they know when they pick the phone, a lot of people challenge me. And they want to burn down the school, they want to kill me. And then uh, 
I have my reason. I talk to them directly, indirectly, as a law. No matter what business you are, you own the restaurant. If you say no, American, Chinese only. Why don't you put the, uh, the big, big advertisement or some writing out? This only for Chinese. Right. And then you open the door for American, for all kinds of people. Right. And I open a school for Kung Fu Wusu. I cannot say Chinese only. So how was it resolved? The result is a great jury. They understand. They come to me directly, indirectly. I talk to them as a law. It's a non-profit. Nobody takes a salary. My accountant says, it's the Mr. Fong. He also practiced the Kung Fu Wusu. He proved it. My temple, nobody takes a salary. So, <clears throat> later we get the non-profit license. Very difficult because the American government also a very careful what you use. Yes. If you liar and what happened, they check my history, yes. they check my accountant, and we have so many years, nobody takes a salary, and then they prove it.